Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel or welcome to my channel if it's the first time you're visiting. Thank you so much for joining me today. If you have not already guessed by the title, today I'm going to be sharing with you my January favourites and I love filming these videos at the end of the month because it makes me really think about what products I have reached for the most in the month just gone. So if you like the sound of that, then please do keep on watching. So as with all of my favorites videos, I will be mostly sharing fragrances. However, I do add on a few other kind of beauty items to the end of the video, and I might start adding on my favorite TV shows or maybe favorite books, if you like the sound of that, because I know we all have lives outside of fragrances too. So I think it will be fun to share these things and also for you to share your recommendations back to me. So let's get started on the fragrance favorites of the month. And first is from Commodity and it is from the Archive collection. And this one is Rain. And I did mention this in another video that I recently filmed, which is my favorite Clean Girl aesthetic fragrances. So if you like the sound of that video, please do go and check it out. But I am so glad I finally have Rain in my collection. It was sold out for a hot minute. And this is exactly the type of fragrance that I am craving at the moment because I'm really into those clean and fresh fragrances right now. And I know it's odd because we're in winter, but yeah, this really does hit the spot for me. And in essence, I can see where the name Rain came from. Now it doesn't smell like rain specifically to me. I mean, I live in the UK and rain doesn't smell the nicest. However, it does give me the vision of rain in a beautiful flower garden and it's spring summertime, so it's not cold weather and the rain has hit some fresh florals, let's say like freesia or lotus flower, and those florals are dewy and the rain is just dripping off and it just leaves the most beautiful, fresh, aquatic, clean floral note at the end. Oh, it is beautiful. This has a hefty dote of freesia, which is one of my favorite floral notes. I feel like that is quite a dewy flower in general and a very fresh flower. And it's girly without being old fashioned in any way because some florals can pull old fashioned depending on how they're used obviously within the composition. But to me, whenever I smell a fragrance with freesia, I always feel like it's a little bit modern. I don't know, that's just my take anyway. But yeah, if you like a light, aquatic, fresh and dewy fragrance with floral nuances throughout, it's a little bit musky and a little bit woody, but yet yeah, rain is so beautiful and I just feel like this has been perfect for the month of January and I know I'm going to reach for it a lot this year. One thing I did want to mention actually, so Rain is from Commodities Archive Collection and you can still purchase the Archive Collection right now. However, I do believe these are going to be discontinued in the future. So these were from Commodities original line before they rebranded and there are some heavy hitters within this collection. I have some firm favorites, Rain being one of them. And if you were too scared of blind buying one of the archive collection, they actually do a discovery kit for that collection too. So anyway, I thought I would mention that because whilst you can buy them right now, I don't know how long they will be available for just because they are being discontinued in the future. But yeah, rain is gorgeous and I'll be very sad to see it go and I will probably have to purchase a backup bottle. I have another fragrance from Commodity in my January favorites and there was something that spurred this on. So one of my friends came over and we did a bit of a sample swap and she actually bought me the archive collection from Commodity to test and I went through it and I was like, oh, there's just so many fragrances in here that I love, which is why I've kind of had a kick on the archive collection right now. So expect to maybe see more fragrances to come. There are a few more within the archive collection that I wanna pick up, but the next fragrance that I wanna discuss is Magnolia from Commodity. And again, Magnolia is a fragrance note that I'm just really drawn to right now. And I can't quite put my finger on why, but I think because I've been enjoying those fresher, lighter scents, I think Magnolia fits in with that type of scent profile. And when I went to Tokyo in December, my mother-in-law had Aqua di Parma Magnolia Nobel, I think it's called, and I sprayed it and I was like, oh, this is just so, so beautiful. So it made me go on the hunt for more Magnolia fragrances. And there are a few others that I wanna pick up, 
but Commodity Magnolia really stood out to me in the Discovery Kit. So yeah, I had to have this one. It's quite a green magnolia fragrance. It has water lily, it has eucalyptus, it has ylang ylang. What else does it have? I think it has a little bit of rose in here. It has grapefruit up top. Very beautiful citrus blast. And then you've got like a muskiness in the base. I do remember reading in the notes that it had a caramel note in here, which I don't personally really pick up. It does have a beautiful sweetness to it, but not in an overpowering or gourmand type of way. It really is a beautiful, light, watery, slightly green floral scent. So if you are into your clean aesthetic fragrances, or you just really like those fresh florals, I would highly recommend checking out Magnolia from Commodity. And I would love to know some of your Magnolia fragrance recommendations down in the comments below, because like I said, I am on the hunt for more fragrances with that specific note. I think I might pick up the Juliet Has A Gun, I think it's called Magnolia Bliss too. But yeah, Commodity Magnolia is so gorgeous and I know I'm gonna be wearing this a lot in the spring summer time too. My next January favorite is from Cana Barcelona and this one is Tardes. And I have definitely spoken about this one in a few videos now, and I am just so drawn to this scent profile. There is something beautiful about that musky almond milk vibe that it has going on within the composition. Again, I feel like it fits in with that clean and fresh scent profile vibe, although you probably wouldn't be able to tell that from the note breakdown. I don't know if that's just how I perceive the fragrance, but to me, it is definitely a very clean, put together, sophisticated fragrance. It has notes of almond, rose, geranium, it even has plum and celery. And I'm not really sure if I can pick out that celery note. I think it's kind of in the head that I can smell it, but don't let that put you off at all because it is a super beautiful fragrance. It also has tonka bean and heliotrope in the base. So what I perceive this fragrance to be is a very almond slash almond milk, slightly lactonic, musky fragrance with light bits of florals throughout. I don't massively get the plum. It's slightly woody, but yeah, I just really, really enjoy this fragrance. I love a note of almond, but this takes it in a different direction because normally you kind of get that marzipan vibe from almond notes, whereas this one is more of a musky almond with a little bit of florals and a little bit of tartness there from the plum. So yeah, you've probably seen other people rave about Tardes and for good reason. And it just suits those fragrance profiles that I'm absolutely craving right now. And I know I'm gonna wear this so much this year, but I've already been reaching for it a lot in January. So yeah, Tardes is definitely one of my favorite January favorites. Next up, we have a vanilla fragrance and it is by M. Mikalev and it is Note Vinny. And this one is hands down at the moment in my top three vanilla fragrances. There is something so addictive about Note Vini. I can't quite put my finger on it, but it is just the most beautifully done vanilla. It's not sickly sweet at all. It has an airiness to it. And I like to explain it as like a transparent vanilla. It is super addictive. To me, it smells super sexy. Like if I smelt this on someone else, I would think they smell very, very good and I would definitely want to be sniffing them. But what does Note Vini smell like? Okay, well, there's definitely a vanilla, slightly caramelized vanilla, but it has floral notes in there too, which I think makes this vanilla so appealing. It does have some citruses in here, but very lightly, and it's teeny bit woody. Some people can pick out the rum and cognac in here. I personally don't pick that up, but what I do pick up is a beautiful soft vanilla. Like I said, slightly transparent. It's not a thick, dense, gooey vanilla. It smells a little bit caramelized to my nose. And then you have some gorgeous florals kind of going throughout the fragrance. And yeah, if you have not sampled Note Vini by M. Mikalev, I would highly, highly recommend trying it out if you like vanilla fragrances. Even if you don't like vanilla fragrances, if you enjoy florals, I think you would really like this one. I think you can pick up samples too, so I'd highly recommend going to the M. Mikalev website, seeing if you can pick up a decant of this. 
But yeah, it's definitely one of my favorite vanillas and I've been reaching for it a lot this January because like you've probably already guessed, I've been enjoying the slightly lighter and fresher scents this month. So yeah, this is a trusty fave and I will continue to purchase this for many, many years. We're gonna switch lanes a little bit and talk about an eyeshadow product because this is an eyeshadow I wear in many videos and so many of you have asked what I am wearing. So, it is by Urban Decay and it is from the Moondust collection and this color is called Space Cowboy and it definitely was popular at one point but I finally got my hands on it. I don't think you can probably see how shimmery it is but I will try to show you up close. It's absolutely gorgeous and to me it's a pretty transparent almost nudie base and then it's got some cute mostly silver shimmers through it and it's just nice to put a little bit on the eyes and it reflects in the light beautifully and I think it's subtle enough that you could wear it every day but also gives you a glam touch so I'm absolutely obsessed with this I don't get a crazy amount of fallout down my face too I personally use my finger so I put my finger in dab it on the eyes and it's as simple as that. So I absolutely wanted to mention this because I think it's so universal and I think it's such a pretty product. So that was Space Cowboy by Urban Decay. Next up might be a little bit of a strange recommendation. However, I've had a few issues with my hair recently. So the product I'm gonna show you is by Philip Kingsley and it's from the Density range and this is the Preserving Scalp Drops and you just put the serum throughout your scalp. So let me just give you a little bit of a close up. And this is supposed to reduce hair fall and preserve density. So a little bit of a backstory. My hair about four months ago just started shedding an extreme amount compared to normal. So I've always shed a lot of hair. My hair is thick and it's long. However, it started to shed at least 50% more than normal and I would find myself in the shower and I'd be pulling out chunks of my hair and then I would brush my hair and there'd be more chunks of it and to be honest it got a little bit worrying. I did have some unfortunate events happen last year which makes me think this is potentially due to stress that my hair is falling out but I would say I've lost about 50% of the density in my hair so my hair used to be a lot thicker than this and it was quite a lot longer I chose to chop it off. Don't get me wrong, I still have a lot of hair. My hair was very naturally thick, but I wanted to do everything I could to preserve the density and increase new growth. And this is actually my second bottle of the Preserving Scalp Drops, and I put it on probably every other night, probably not every night, I should do it every day. And it's got a little dropper with the serum, and then I kind of just put it along the scalp line and then put it in the hair and like massage it in. But I also use the shampoo and conditioner from this range, which I think is equally as good. But the thing that probably would make the most difference is looking after my scalp and encouraging new growth. So I know that's a little bit of a weird product to talk about, but if you do wanna reduce hair fall and promote new growth, you might wanna try a scalp serum or something similar to this. I know there's a few different ones on the market, but this is the one I chose to try and I've been enjoying it, of course. This is my second bottle, so yeah. That was Philip Kingsley Density Preserving Scalp Drops. And last but not least, we have a skincare product. And this is by Youth to the People, and it is called the Super Berry Hydrate and Glow Dream Mask. And this is my second, maybe my third jar of this product. I absolutely adore it. And just a bit of a disclaimer, I don't use it as a face mask. I actually use this every day. And the reason, I guess it's called a mask, it's because it's really thick. Let me show you up close. I'm hoping you can see the texture in there. So it has vitamin C, squalane, and hyaluronic acid. And I've been really suffering with dry skin lately. I would say now I've reached my 30s, my skin has definitely got a lot more dry. I used to always be an oily skin girl. So some moisturizers I don't find hydrating enough and I've tried everything. I've tried hyaluronic acid serums. And for me, this product is the one that makes my skin glow the most and makes my skin feel hydrated. And I guess because it is pretty thick. So I try to only wear this once a day. So I normally put it on at night, 
but I do sometimes use it in the morning too because it makes my makeup go on really well. And I think Youth to the People do such brilliant products. They're pro-grade vegan and I just think they're a very ethical company and all of the products I've tried thus far, I've really enjoyed. I use their cleanser too and I'm on my third, if not fourth bottle. But yeah, this has really helped me out with my dry skin, so I wanted to add it into the video. And that is all of my January favorites. I hope you enjoyed my list. Please do let me know if anything has caught your eye. But what I mostly wanna know is what fragrances or products have you been enjoying in January? Please do let me know down in the comments. It can be whatever you like, but I love reading all of the comments and I often research your recommendations. Thank you so much for joining me today. It's been a pleasure as always, and I hope to see you in a future video to come. Have a wonderful day. Thank you and goodbye.